Hello everybody, I want to talk about dealing with messy data. We deal with it every day, whether it's an internal spreadsheet, a customer uh, spreadsheet that's sent over to us. So I want to walk through how we can scope uh, the extent of the dirty data that we're dealing with. Now something to keep in mind is that oftentimes we're talking about uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of rows, and perfection sometimes doesn't necessarily need to be uh, attained in order to get uh, the result or the analysis out of your spreadsheet that you want to. But let me show you a few quick tricks that I use when I initially look at a, a large spreadsheet for whatever the purpose that I'm looking at for. Um, in this case, we're, we're dealing with several columns of data, a lot of different rows, and I initially will always freeze the header row. So in this case, row one is our header row, so I'm just going to click the row under it. I'm going to go to the View tab at the very top, and then click Freeze Panes. And you can see it freezes row one in place. I can always unclick this at any point to unfreeze. If we want to freeze columns, I can click on uh, column B. Let's say we want to freeze column A. And click Freeze Panes, and as you can see now we can scroll to the left and right with column A still in place at all times. You can also do this, uh, a combination of uh, rows and columns, if you click the first cell in that grid. So let's say in this case we want to freeze column A and row 1. I'm going to click on cell B2. Again, go to freeze panes, unfreeze to reset it. Here we go, freeze panes. And now we can scroll down and left to right. And it keeps exactly what we want to keep in place. Let's unfreeze that. We're just going to stick with row one, keeping that frozen. Second uh, trick we have is just scoping the size of the data we're talking about. And we do this, uh, I often do this by hitting the control down key. So in this case, I just did that, and we're working with 62,000 lines of data. I'm going to hit control up to get back to the very top. And you see, since I've frozen the first row, it does select cell A1 if I just click the down key, or the down, down arrow key, it, it takes me back up to the very top of the spreadsheet. You can also do this with control right arrow, and it takes me to the last column of data. Excel recognizes the first cell without a value in it. In this case, it would be cell L1. So it takes me to the extent of where I want to go, which is uh, K1. I can then hit the control left arrow key, and it takes me back to the start. So that's a quick and easy way to, uh, to get away from using the manual scroll bar or the scroll uh, on your mouse. The second or the third trick we want to use is copy and transposing data. In this case, I, perhaps I want to know all of my column header names and a, an example of what uh, is within each column. Now, in this case, we're only working with 11 columns of data. It's not that much, uh, but with any spreadsheet, you want to be able to digest the data at hand. So I'm going to just select the first two rows of data, which includes my header row, and then an example of some of the data there. We can, do, we can copy this, and then go to a new sheet. And I have a couple different uh, ways that I can paste this. I can right click and just do a regular paste. I can paste the values, formulas, transpose. In this case, I actually want to do, uh, I just want to transpose it. So I'm just going to click that. You do have different variations of this uh, in different combinations. So let's say those were formulas. I can go to Paste Special here and pick a combination of these where I wanted to paste these values and transpose at the same time. So now I have an example of what this data looks like uh, just transposed. So here are my column names now in rows an example of what that data looks like. Now we talked about trying to be able to digest all of the information at one time, and in this case I have to scroll left to right in order to read it all. Um, one of the tricks that I like to use is do a control A, which selects all the data immediately at hand, and let's, I like lessening the font, maybe a nine point, changing the font to something a little more readable, and then if you click on the right hand of each column, it's going to auto fit to the largest cell value in that column. And in these cases, we can move it further in, because I, 
I want to see in this instance uh, all 11 columns on the same spreadsheet at the same time. Now, you, as you can see, some of the header values got cut off. So one way to uh, to alleviate that is to select your header row and then go to Wrap Text, and Excel will automatically wrap it to text. And that helps condense some of the columns together. Last trick before we actually start cleaning the data is filtering to see what we're working with. So if you don't have filter selected in your header row, uh, an easy way to do this is just go to the Data tab, click Filter, and you'll see these little uh, down arrow icons pop up on each of the header columns, and that way you can select and see what is actually within the columns. In this case, I'm not concerned about name or city. Uh, I'm more concerned about you know, the ID, the goods issue date, which is the date we're working with in this file, um, the state of the zip codes, and if we see any erroneous state values here. So when I select this, this is when I can go through each column to see, and in this case, just with the dates, I know that there's some erroneous values with 2018 and 2005 showing. That looks like most of our data is in 2015, but it's not rolling up to 2015, which tells me it's probably a formatting issue with those date, date values, which we'll address in a later session. We select the zip code. As we all know, zip codes in the U.S. have five digits, uh, but you can add an, an additional four for more accuracy. So we see some of that. So we've got some combination of five digit zip codes along with nine digit zip codes with a, with a uh, hyphen in between. And then of course, with most shipment files or transportation data files, or really any locational file in North America, we're going to deal with Canadian zip codes too, which are six digits, uh, including, um, or six spaces, including letters and numbers. So we'll have to deal with those at a later time. The last piece that I'm looking at is uh, are these cell error values. So these are shown when you see a little green uh, arrow in the top left-hand corner of a cell. This tells me that there's some kind of formatting error, and if we click here, Excel sees this number is stored as a text. You have options to convert this to a number or ignore the error. When you see this and you have a large amount of data, uh, it's overly cumbersome to either click through each of them or if you select a huge array of these and uh, then click to convert as a number, it can really slow down your machine. So I'll, I'll show you a trick in a, in a subsequent lesson that helps us get around that. Uh, when we actually start cleaning the data. 